I had a broken jaw. I had a collapsed lung. I had cracked vertebra in my neck, broken neck, but it didn't, it didn't get into the spinal column that this hand was just kind of crunched. So he broke some of these bones and he damaged the nerves. And essentially, as I understand it, paralyzed one of my vocal cords. His bottom jaw kind of dug in here and his top one was over in here. And he kind of had me like that. And I can remember looking out, I could see his belly and leg and everything. It was, he didn't take his claws to me which is good. Um, so I think all the injuries I got were bites. He was just trying to get me out of that tent with his mouth, probably trying to hold the tent down with his hands, I don't know. <laughs> all I remember was <laughs> On July 24th, 2013, Matt Dyer was attacked and nearly killed by a polar bear while on a camping trip with the Sierra Club in the Torngat Mountains. The Torngats are in the Labrador Peninsula on the northern edge of Newfoundland, about 500 miles south of the Arctic Circle. In recent decades, temperatures in the Arctic have been rising at unprecedented rates, and the ice where polar bears live and hunt seals is disappearing. In turn, hungry polar bears are being forced onto land where they seek alternative food sources, sometimes even attacking humans in an effort to survive. In towns like Arviat, Canada, armed bear monitors patrol the streets, scaring away the ever-increasing number of polar bears that arrive. In Churchill, Canada, so many polar bears parade through downtown that they've built a special jail to hold them all. The earth and the conflict between polar bears and humans is heating up. A year after his attack, Matt wanted to return to the Torngat Mountains to get closure after his near-death experience and to revisit the bears that nearly killed him. We went along for the journey to investigate the connection between climate change and polar bear attacks. Yeah. Uh, no say. How are you? Uh, name's Matthew Dyer. I'm a, a staff attorney with Pine Tree Legal Assistance in Lewiston, Maine. And we represent low-income people in civil legal disputes. I also help people with public benefits issues, disability overpayments. It's what they used to call poverty law. I've been here 15 years. It's a good long time. You know, I got so much polar bear swag when I got back, and people are always like, well, is, is that gonna bother you or anything like that? No, not at all. I'm a polar bear would. <laughs> right on the desk. But, I mean, everyone's different. Everyone has different um, ways they react to trauma and stuff. I, that, I don't get it that way, I guess. <laughs> My last trip there got cut off so short. There were more things I wanted to see, more time I wanted to spend there, try to absorb. I gotta be quite honest, after this trip, um, this is kind of the closure for me. I've never been through a trauma like that before, and I just think it's one way to work through it in my own mind. I may be wrong. There's a lot worse ways you could go. <laughs> I mean, really, if you gotta, if we all gotta take that journey alone sometime, and that's one way to, you know, getting ripped up by a bear. In many ways better than being in a nursing home for 15 years, lost your mind shitting yourself. You know, um, oh, I try to look at it that way. <laughs> Some positive side. <laughs> oh, shit. Matt is the most resilient guy I have ever met. Um, he is, you know, he, he really has a sense of, of humor about it. He was attacked by a polar bear, was almost killed, and is able to talk about this, is willing to go back. Yes, I think you were crazy if you did the same thing that we did without figuring out more carefully what, what, ha what happened. Well, Rich is the one that always comes up with these interesting uh, places to go. And we like to go places um, that uh, people have not 
gone before. The wildlife, the fjords, it just seemed like an, a really interesting place to go. And what I was looking into was, okay, we've got a destination, how do we get there? And I found the company called Rapid Lake Lodge, and they offered flying us into the park. We did tons of research around what the right protocols are in polar bear country. And some people recommend bear guards, some don't. We talked to our outfitter and he had sent a number of people out there before with, with, with those protections. We talked to Parks Canada about our trip and what we should do. We told them what protections we had. We were carrying flare guns, the fence, bear bangers, and bear spray. They thought that was fine. And also the other information we had from the park was that among the pieces of equipment that you could use for bear deterrent, the electric fence wasn't one of them. And so we figured we had all of those plus the electric fence, so sure, we felt safe. And, and we believed that the fence was, was adequate. We had no reason to believe we were gonna be attacked in the middle of the night. And in fact, we had never, nobody had ever heard of that before. So we had no reason to think that that would happen. We're here at base camp. It's the entry point to the Torngat Mountains. Uh, and we're gonna get a crash course right now on how to stay safe around polar bears. It's very likely we're gonna see a lot of them this trip. You know, we figured we'd be okay with that fence. I mean, I've never came to bear country. I am just not, didn't know. But once I saw that fence, I'm like, <laughs> we're fucked. <laughs> and we were. Why aren't there bigger bear fences? Why aren't there? Yeah. Meaning that, like, why create a bear fence so that a bear can get through? It, it can get through this building if it wants to. That's the problem. If a bear puts his mind to it, he'll do what he wants. Unless you're going to make a solid steel wall, and then it takes away from the effect of where you are. Yeah. You know, now you're in a compound or a prison. Yeah. We've always had that concern about what do we do with people that aren't with us. How, are we liable? Are we responsible? Base camp is here. so. When I hear that someone's camping in the park, I don't get too excited, but uh, I figure anyone that wants to camp inside in the interior like that is probably pretty experienced. That's not always the case, but you always try to hope so. Then this is a mandatory video that you have to watch. So if you need a bathroom break, I suggest you take it now. It's, uh, it's, a, it's not a very long video, so you okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. What should you do if a polar bear approaches? Your best response is always to stop, stay as calm as possible, and quickly assess the situation. From the 1960s to the 2000s, there were about 7 to 12 polar bear attacks per decade. But in the past five years, there have already been at least 14 attacks, and it's predicted that there will be 35 by the end of this decade five times more than in previous decades. Sometimes the bear may make an aggressive lunge at you. If it does, stand your ground. This may be difficult. Facing an aggressive bear will be terrifying. If it persists or attacks, respond as you would for a predatory attack. Fight for your life and shoot to kill. Most visitors, most groups here, go to extraordinary lengths to make sure that they don't put themselves in a situation uh, which provides a bear with that kind of opportunity. It occurred in an area where we would have and did highly recommend the group not to be traveling in or not to be camping in. Because here, bears are typically found along the coast, close to the water. You wouldn't have seen anybody, any bear guard agreeing to camp there. Our, our, our folks here would go a minimum of 10 kilometers inland. And even then, you need to be careful, very careful. But when we say stay away from the coast, we mean, you know, 10 kilometers inland, right where they camped. That is uh, Polar Bear Highway. It's very uh, dangerous. We see polar bears there all the time. That's what they told you guys when you were up there? They didn't even tell us that when we were there, when they picked us up in the time that we stayed at base camp. That was never mentioned. You know, we had told Parks Canada where we were going to, to land 
I mean, we said we were going to go to that beach. Why wouldn't someone have told us that? I mean, because that's a place that gets advertised as a trip. I mean, we didn't come up with this idea on our own. So then just to be clear, why was Matt's group allowed to, to camp there? Well, I think because Matt's group came along before we fully understood the potential risks that were associated with that area. We can give them as much good advice as we think is good advice. And, and people still want to go out there and experience the land and experience travel on the land. And sometimes they take chances, sometimes they win, and sometimes they lose. We were adequately prepared to what I think anyone's knowledge of the risk was at that point uh, for, for backpacking trips in polar bear country. I'm not aware of a lot of incidents, if you go back 10 years, of polar bears attacking humans. But apparently, the incidence is rising. So maybe the, the rules for being in polar bear country have to change.